everybody. It's Tyler here for fun. Checking in with 325 Respawn Robotics Greater Pittsburgh uh, winners just a week ago. Congratulations on an awesome performance uh, for that as well, too. Coming in here, the Central Illinois Regional looking really good as well, too. 325 uh, has a lot of just great things going for it. I love the overall packaging that they're doing on the robot as well, too. We're going to be talking about uh, the journey going through with their intake using an interesting uh, uh, use of compliant wheels. So I think we'll be showing that off. Talking about their uh, shooter area, why they've been so effective so far. They got some great things going on with Vision, some great localization and padding along on the field. So let's learn more about them. Come up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Michael, let's run through the robot on here. Starting with your intake, you've taken an interesting approach with your compliant wheel, but let's talk about your entire intake and kind of what approach you've used uh, for this year's game. Okay, so we have these compliant wheels right here. Um, they grip really well on the note. Um, and then you have these finger-like uh, wheels down here that kind of kick the note up and get it into our articulation system up here. Um, another cool, interesting part of our intake is that we have these pulleys over here. So these, uh, these pulleys run back to our motor right here and it, it's, it's a usage of this, uh, this dead space, this dead space right here in our frame. So that's how we drive our intake. Um, over here, because it's just trying to move the power from the rollers, we just have gears over here to power uh, these, these two rollers down here. Um, do we want to run the intake? So it'll bring it in and then bring it up into our articulation system. Uh, with the uh, wheels on there, how'd you come up with uh, utilizing a compliant wheel that way? And can we see what that kind of looks like? And then you got it right behind you there. Yeah. Wait, what? Your compliant wheel? Oh, yeah. So basically all we did for this is we just cut a regular wheel and made it into like a uh, finger-like wheel. Um, yeah. I don't so do you have to like turn inside out then or how does that work? Um, no. So it's basically this is just a regular compliant wheel and it just... You, you, you just cut it at the, the edge and it turns it into these. Oh, so you have the inside of it like, on your yes. rod. Yes, gotcha. It's the inside of the wheel. Okay. When you were looking at uh, on your intake, uh, from a testing perspective, did you have to make any major changes throughout the uh, build season? Yes, for sure. So these are custom intake side plates um, and we had to do tons of testing and um, redesigns in order to get both the um, d design right and for these uh, these pulleys we had to get the distance correct in order for our for our pulleys to run smoothly let's continue on this robot and start to go through your uh, shooters well too a lot of cool custom work for that uh, so Andrew's gonna be uh, coming in to talk to us more about what that is and you got some uh, some great design on the side here too so talk to me about what's going on with the shooter and the overall packaging for it alrighty thank you so we have uh, our shooter wheels are actually Colson wheels on the left and we have uh, compliant wheels on the right. We chose the blue compliant wheels because they don't expand too much, but they give a little bit of spin on the note, so it keeps it a little more straight. We also added some light weighting patterns on the side just to keep it a little lighter, make it easier for our motor to lift. Um, added a beam brake so that it doesn't, when we intake, it doesn't hit the shooter wheels when we're prepping it. So it's been Quite a thrill. Can we see that note come back in and kind of see how that process works? Yeah. Alrighty. There it goes. So I hit that beam brake, kind of go back a little bit. Yep. On there. Very cool with that. And then uh, we were talking earlier, you've done a little bit to improve on your amp shot. Tell me more about that. Yes. So in Pittsburgh, we were trying to score through the amp through the top, but then we realized if we just go a little higher, we can shoot it down into the amp and by using variable speed, we use 12 volts on the front roller and three volts on the back and it goes straight down. Here it, he will demonstrate it. 
So this is a position where we see this arm come out on here. Uh, when you're shooting as well, uh, is that coming out through there or is it coming out through your flywheels in the back end? When or we could it do both? Okay, it, it can't make it into the speaker through the intake part, but it can through this side. So we wanted our intake on the opposite side of our shooter so that in the odd time we don't have to turn around. We can just make a quick cycle out of it. And then on your uh, wheels here, you mentioned, you know, use, uh, utilizing different ones to me and getting a little bit of spin out of that, right? Uh, what kind of testing did you do? Or did you try any other types of wheels or were these the ones you, you just picked out right away? Yeah, we tried other kinds of wheels. We tried um, more tread-like wheels and they just made a bunch of confetti. We had so many torn up notes over all the testing. We tried one wheel on one side, but we noticed that the difference in notes it was inconsistent and with a note like this being legal, um, we wanted to not take the chance. Aiden, I noticed uh, from a vision, you got a couple pies in your robot here. So let's talk about uh, what you have, how you're doing some localization as well too. I know we'll be uh, showcasing a little bit on your uh, driver station or uh, on your computer here. Yeah, so we are using the uh, Advantage Kit base template from uh, 6328 Mechanical Advantage. And then we are using Advantage Scope to simulate that. So this was from our uh, practice match five. This is our us running our four note. You can see it's kind of laggy, but you can see that it, that's the model of our robot. And it uses the two cameras on the back to know where it is on the field at all times. And it runs through that. And then if I zoom out real quick, you can also see later on in the match, it going across the field, coming back. It's We're still working on the accuracy a little bit, but we're able to hold one button and it will drive to the amp or drive to the speaker, uh, like the subwoofer part, uh, drive over to the human player station and it makes it to where our cycles are just a tiny bit faster than what it would be as if a human was doing it by themselves. Um, so are, is your driver actually utilizing that every single match right now? Uh, yeah, we have tried it a few times with scoring on the amp, um, but we've been testing sh uh, shooter positions, uh, testing our accuracy. So we've been using like human input on where we are in the field, but later on in uh, call matches, we'll use our set points um, from the, uh, yeah. What advice do you have for teams that want to try to do something like this on there? Because I think it can be kind of intimidating sometimes, but once you get it going, there's a lot of great things you can really unlock with the potential of your robot. Yeah, so uh, what we did is we reached out to a lot of teams locally that have done this work. Uh, we There's a team, 5712 Hemlock, they are based out of Michigan. They helped us a lot with the actual base code and then the cameras. We were originally using Limelight, but we took, like we saw how much Limelight costed versus how much Photon Vision costed and Photon Vision was being more accurate for us, so we switched. Um, we plan on adding more cameras eventually. It's really the best to have a view at an a at least one April tag at all times, um, especially when you have slippery wheels like us, we're using Colson's. Colson drive wheels are really slippery and they make the odometry not accurate. Um, so by having cameras, it helps with our localization a little bit more, uh, so that way we always know where we are. Well, Respawn Robotics, congratulations on a great season so far. It's going to be a Thank tough order here at Central Illinois. A lot of great competitors, but your team is definitely up there uh, in the mix. So can't wait to see how you do here. Good luck the rest of the season, and we'll see you at World Championships. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.